your shoes. Exactly where you guys are right now, where you're sitting, is exactly where I was sitting. I graduated from the Schulich School of Business uh, in November of 2019. Um, so I know what it's like to be a York University student. I know what it's like to go to Stong. I know what it's like to go to the gym here. I've, I'm exactly like you guys, okay? So I'm not any more intelligent than you. I'm not any more resourceful than you. I'm not any more anything than you. We are the same people, okay? The only thing that I chose to be different than everyone else that I was graduating with was I decided to start a business as early as I humanly could, okay? So pretty much what happened was is, you know, everyone in school, they, they want to get an internship, right? Because in order to get hired, you need a really solid internship. It builds up your work experience. And so I was applying to tons of jobs. I finally got one fish to bite, and that was IBM, okay? And it wasn't a four-month internship like classic summer internships. It was a one-year opportunity where I was able to take a full year off school. Um, so I had to take a year off school and then go to IBM and work as a financial analyst, which was fantastic for me. Okay, I learned a lot within the first seven months of being there. Um, I learned all about finance, all about technology, and my work was great, but it got to a point where I literally stopped learning. I didn't learn a single thing. I was like a robot. I was doing the same tasks every single day. I was doing daily reports, weekly reports, and monthly reports. All the exact same thing. I even went to my manager and said, hey, you know, I took this year off. You know, I want to get ahead. I want to learn so much so that I can you know, come back to school with even more ammo in my belt. Um, but I wasn't able to do that despite him assigning me new work. It just never became something that allowed me to learn. So I actually felt robbed in a way. Here I am thinking that I'm going to actually get ahead. I felt robbed of my sort of pace, right? I felt robbed that I wasn't going to be learning anything new. So I decided, I was like, you know what? I tried so many times to tell my manager to give me something new and it didn't work out. I'm just going to quit. So I immediately quit that job and started my first business. And mind you, I did not think twice. I did not think hard uh, about what business I was going to start. I just picked something that I knew 100% was completely feasible, something that I knew that I could execute on, something that I knew was low initial investment, something that I knew no matter how old I am, young I am, I am able to do this, okay? And so I started a valet parking service business, okay? And essentially what that looked like is this, like you see on the screen, we had uh, valet drivers stationed outside of business locations, establishments, golf courses, hotels, venues, restaurants, and we would station our valet drivers out there to not only add a level of efficiency to that business establishment so that their guests don't have to worry about parking, but also so that uh, they can add a level of luxury to their events, right? You have the white glove, you know, opening the door, you know, parking the car for the guest. Uh, and that was, uh, that was something that, you know, really a lot of business owners were really excited about. And so we were running this business. We had a lot of clients. We worked with some really awesome companies. But really what I love about this business is sort of the trajectory it put me on. Because in order to make this business successful, uh, with, and I was within my year off still, right? So, you know, I was about seven, eight months into that full year off. Um, and so I started this business. And, and in order to make this successful, I had to be really good at marketing, customer acquisition. I had to figure out how am I going to get in front of restaurants, hotels, golf courses, and venues? How am I going to make sure they choose my valet company over the other valet companies? And uh, so I had to learn a lot about marketing. Bottom line, uh, I read a ton of marketing books. Um, I started deploying cold emails, targeting event planners, wedding planners. Uh, I started, uh, you know, ranking in Google. I started doing you know, as many things as I could to get as many customers as humanly possible, okay? And what was awesome about this business is a light bulb popped in my head and I realized, and this is mid-year off, right? So I still have to go back to school the following September. A light bulb went off in my head where I was like, okay, I am offering valet parking services whereby I need to actually go to the businesses. I need to make sure people show up to their shifts. I need to make sure that no one crashes a car. I need to make sure that there's no liability issues or anything like that. It's a headache. And plus, cars are going to honestly park themselves probably in the next 10 years, right? So I realized, I'm like, I need to get into something else that's a little bit more scalable, something that I can work off of Wi-Fi and deploy something that I'm good at, deliver value to clients, make sure that they're happy, but also, you know, prepare myself to go back to school that following September and be able to execute a business while in school, okay? So I decided I was going to go full-time on Variance Marketing, which is my second and current company. It's our main business. Um, and so essentially, what I'm going to ask you guys to do, I'm going to ask you guys to all take out your phones right now. So everyone just take out your phone, please. Give you guys a couple seconds here. 
Everyone take out your phone, go to Google, go to google.com for me, and I want you to type in the following keywords, okay? Toronto SEO services, okay? When you Google that, you're gonna see a bunch of advertisements. You're gonna see a bunch of ads that's gonna say sponsored. I want you to scroll past all of the ads that say sponsored and look for the first result that's an organic result that is not a sponsored advertisement, okay? And if it's variance marketing, I want you all to yell out the word yes. yes. Right on, okay. The only reason I said that to you was so you guys know exactly what we do at variance marketing. We help other companies essentially get to the first page of Google, so that increases their search exposure, increases their traffic, and essentially spikes their revenue. Okay, so we were running that business, and you know, I started off just myself, dialing for dollars, right? That's all I was doing, cold calling every single day, trying to get clients. And now we're a team of 26 individuals. We have an office just north of Allen Road, uh, and we're growing. We have clients all across, uh, you know, internationally, actually, we have clients around the world, mostly in North America, Here's some of the clients that we work with. So I'm sure, does anyone recognize any of the companies on this, uh, on this list here? Okay, cool, so you're seeing Six Buzz, Aroma Espresso Bar, Cineplex, Sick Kids Foundation, um, Ellis Dawn, right? So there's some large companies that we've worked with and we're super grateful to have the, had the opportunity to service these clients. But uh, you know, honestly, what I learned about variance, and this is what I want you guys to understand, your first business is not gonna be your last business. You need to create a business that's first of all super feasible, but also allows for you to generate a lot of cash flow, okay? Because what you can do with that cash flow is you can now invest in other business opportunities and other opportunities that are more passive, don't require as much of your time particularly, but they might require more investment. So for example, starting a store like this, it takes a lot of money to you know, go ahead and create that, but once the store is running, then ultimately all you need to do is make sure there's a bud tender, there's someone in there you know, managing the store, taking all the transactions, and it's ultimately passive, right? In, in a way, I'm saying comparable to my existing business. So we started modern day, December of last year, 2021. Uh, it hasn't even been a year yet uh, since we opened the first store, and we are now at six locations, okay? We have one in Saskatchewan, one in BC opening up, a couple in Ontario, um, and we're looking to get into the US as well with this brand. So if it wasn't for the skills I generated in the marketing business, and if it wasn't for the cash flow I was generating in the marketing business, there would be no way that we could have started this passive opportunity, okay? And I want you guys to understand something. I've been featured in all these great publications. I'm super humbled. I'm super grateful for the opportunity I've had to be featured in these areas. But I want you to understand something very clearly. I didn't get featured because I was 45 years old and did all the things that I just showed you. I got featured because I was like you guys, anywhere between the age of 18 to the age of 22, 23, 24, and 25. So it's not noteworthy for someone who's been on this earth for a very long time. It is noteworthy, of course, but it's not as noteworthy, noteworthy is the point. Um, it's much more noteworthy for you guys if you guys take it upon yourselves and start as early as humanly possible. Do not wait, okay? There's no reason to wait. Um, but enough about me, guys. I don't really want to sit here and talk too much about myself because I'd rather you guys walk away with some tangible advice, real tangible advice, stuff that you guys could start deploying and the stuff that I started deploying when I was first becoming an entrepreneur. Because it really is easy, guys. I'm not going to lie. I know it seems hard to be an entrepreneur. It is very, very easy, okay? Let's talk about how. So if you're going to be an entrepreneur while you're in school, one thing you need to understand is your life is gonna suck, okay? You're gonna have to work so hard on assignments. You're gonna have to work so hard on making sure your customers are happy and your business is running. So the key here is that you must be able to free up time. You must be able to free up time because you're only humans. We only have 24 hours in the day. And if we can't free up enough time to be able to actually do the things we need to do, do well in school and actually run your business successfully, you're not, it's just not gonna work out. And this conversation's all about you students starting businesses while in school, okay? This is what I wanna focus on, okay? So on the screen, you're seeing Fiverr. This is a platform whereby you can actually go ahead and hire people for $1 an hour, all the way up to $5 an hour, to do quite literally anything you want. So if you have, let's just say you want a developer to build your website. If you're not a website designer or, or developer, 
let the pros do it, right? Go hire someone in Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, or the Philippines, where they will really appreciate those dollars you're giving them, and those dollars go a long way for them, so you're actually impacting their lives in a very, very big way. But also, you get the advantage of not having to pay minimum wage or larger salaries to people so that you can focus on working on your business, not working in your business. Does that make sense? Okay, so on the left side of the screen, you're seeing Fiverr, you're seeing Upwork, you're seeing Freelancer.com, and you're seeing my favorite, OffshoreHires.com. This one is by far the best place to find the lowest, uh, sorry, cheapest talent, uh, but the highest quality skill sets. I usually use OffshoreHires.com for that. And what's crazy is that this is exactly what I did. I literally just hired a bunch of people to do the work for me so that I could focus on working on the business, not in the business. Very key, especially when you have exams, assignments, and all these things. You need to rely on your team to do the things for you. And then what you need to do is also automate time. So you can automate time with human beings, like I just showed you, offshore. And you can also automate time with software. I want everyone to take out your phone and take a picture of this right now. This is by far one of the most important slides here. There are a lot of tools that I used when starting my businesses. Um, and these, we use these tools to this day. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a CPA. I'm not good at accounting, okay? Maybe I took one or two accounting courses in Shulik, but I'm not good at accounting. I'll tell you that straight up. But I can rely on QuickBooks to automate my accounting such that I don't need to be good at accounting. I can if I'm not a lawyer, I, I don't know how to write contracts, but I can rely on lawdepot.ca to access any contract I would ever want for any type of business transaction, okay? There's many other examples in here. Close.io is an example of how to automate your sales process. We use that to this day to automate our entire sales process, right? So take a picture of this, make sure you guys get a picture of this, because these tools are relatively cheap and they are gonna change the game for you, quite literally. Now, when you free up time, like I just showed you, by automating through humans or automating through softwares, you, as the business owner, you get to focus on what actually matters. Now, what matters? What matters is revenue generating activity, okay? You guys, as the business owner, should be focused on acquiring revenue. That's the north star for you. That is the only thing that matters for you, especially in the beginning of starting your business. So this would be like running cold emails, doing a bunch of cold calls every day, running some Facebook ads, maybe doing some flyer distribution, maybe going door to door, doing whatever you have to do. It doesn't matter what you have to do. As long as this activity is attributed to acquiring more revenue. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? I'm gonna give you guys an analogy. Imagine all of us in this room, we're all in the jungle, okay? It's a thousand years ago, we're a tribe, we're in the jungle. You have people on that side of the room that are building the shelters for everyone, the shelter builders. You have all the people in the middle that are the berry gatherers or the fire starters or the cookers, or whatever it is. But then you have the most important role within the tribe which is you have the people that are the hunters. And they go out, they risk their lives every single day to come back with meat so that they can feed the rest of the village. The rest of the village can eat because of the hunters. So without the hunters, there's no shelter gatherers, there's no shelter builders, there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing else. Nothing else exists. And there's no protection on top of that. Um, so one thing I want you guys to understand is that working on your business is quite literally the same analogy, feeding your village. You're gonna build a small village of VAs, virtual assistants, and people offshore. That's your village. Make sure they can eat. How are you gonna make sure they can eat? By focusing on revenue generating activities and getting clients in the door so that the village can actually eat and can work on these customer projects. Whether it's a service business, whether it's a product business, it doesn't matter. Software, it really is irrelevant. You need to build your own little village so you can automate your time. And then what you need to do is focus on acquiring customers, okay? Now, at Variance, we have a philosophy that we've built our company on, okay? Which is more outflow equals more inflow. An outflow is defined as your offer being pumped out into the universe such that a pair of eyeballs gets the chance to see your offer. Whether that's a free trial offer, whether that's, hey, I, I do accounting for people, bookkeeping, whether it's I do marketing for people, it, is, it really does not matter what you do. What matters is how many people are seeing that offer every day. 
right? You have to ask yourselves, if you guys own businesses or want to start a business, how many people every single day are seeing what you have to offer? Because you're praying that your business is going to grow, but you actually don't even know how many people are getting the chance every day to determine whether or not they should take you up on your offer. You don't know how many people, because you don't know how many you're sending out. This is so important, whether you're cold calling, whether you're running Facebook ads, whether you're sending cold emails, these are all forms of outflows, okay? And the philosophy is that more outflows equals more inflows. What are inflows? Inflows are like sales appointments. I run an offer, I send an offer out there, I'm booking sales appointments. If I'm a software company, I might run some kind of ads and give people free trials, and that's my inflow, the free trials. If I'm, if I'm running a product business, I'm running ads or something like that as my outflows, my inflows could be the add to carts that happen on the actual store. The inflow is the next step after the offer has been seen by a pair of eyeballs, okay? That's clear, right? Everyone understands that? Okay, perfect. So what you wanna see here, guys, and this is one of the most important slides in the entire deck, this is the formula that took every one of my businesses that I've started from zero to seven figures, right here. This is it. This is all you need to know. You don't need to know anything else. Literally nothing else. The only thing you need to know is that the more outflows you pump out, the more offers people are see, the more times people are seeing your offer, the more sales appointments you're gonna book. The more sales appointments you're gonna book, the more customers you're gonna close. The more customers you're gonna close, the more people get to experience the value of your solution, the value of your service or product. They get to experience it, and it's your job to package that experience as a video case study or as a video testimonial. Why? Why? Because when you get that video testimony or that case study, you can take that video and case study and put it back on your outflows such that those outflows perform even better. Now you're booking more sales appointments. And if you're booking more sales appointments, you're getting more customers. And if you're getting more customers, you're getting more case studies. And if you're getting more case studies, your outflows are working even better, again. And that happens again and again and again until your business hits seven figures. I swear to God, this is the key. This is the key. Because when you get that case study or that testimonial, you have more proof in the pudding. You have more proof in the pudding around your offer. We're all young. I was a young guy when I started my business too. How are people believing me? How are they believing me? They're believing me because I had the proof. I was able to prove it. I was able to record video case studies of clients that we did well for, that we could then make it a no-brainer for another potential client to say yes to us. Because it's hard for them to say no now, because we have 100 plus case studies on our testimonial page. How can you say no, right? It's impossible. So you need to beef up the perception of your business, beef up the perception of what you're offering by driving a lot of case studies. Even if you have to go to your first customer completely free of charge and say, hey man, I will do your work completely free. All you have to do is give me a video testimonial. That's a good exchange. Because now the next time you talk to a new customer or a potential customer, you now have way more proof in the pudding to be able to actually get a yes for money this time. Does that make sense? Okay. Proof in the pudding in today's marketplace is one of the most important things. There's so many people claiming they're good at marketing. There's so many people claiming they're good at X, Y, Z. But the only way to truly prove that is by having the proof. So make sure you are documenting this proof and make sure you're acquiring more proof every single day. One thing I want you guys to understand is that there's a misconception in the world today. People think that you need to work for 10, 15 years in a particular industry to become a guru at that industry first and then you start your business. That is not how it works. That is not how it works. I completely disagree with that statement. I think that is one of the most false things I've ever heard. What you need to understand is that the only way to become a guru in any particular field is to work in that field and to make a lot of mistakes in that field. So you have to actually look forward to making mistakes because when you make those mistakes, you can iterate off of those mistakes and not make those same mistakes again. So you can learn from what you did wrong and you can consistently change it such that you're chiseling and molding yourself to never ever make these same mistakes again such that now your business becomes more successful. And so what, what, what you need to understand here is that Elon Musk, he started four businesses before he started PayPal. Did you guys know that? Yeah, yes, no? 
No, you didn't know that. So Elon Musk started four companies before he started his first successful company. Most people would actually quit after their first company that failed or would quit after the first hardship they get. You must keep going. You must look forward to mistakes because the only way that you're going to become successful is by learning from those mistakes, just like Elon Musk did, just like we do every single day. Our entire team makes mistakes every day. We actually want people to make mistakes because when people make mistakes, they can learn from it, they get an opportunity to learn from it, and they'll never repeat that again. So the more mistakes you're making, actually the faster your growth will be. So look forward to mistakes and realize that the only way to be a guru is by starting the business early and failing at that business such that you become more successful over time. And just remember that the best time to start is now, and that's because you don't have a wife or a husband, you don't have a mortgage, you don't have kids, you don't have any of these things. You have you, and you have so much time. You have more time now than you will ever have in five years or 10 years or 15 years. So in fact, and you're young, so you have all the energy. You're actually able to work 12, 13 hour days every day right now, four, five, six hours a day for school, and then another six, seven, eight hours for business, okay? And you can even merge the two together and synergize the two such that you're working on both at the same time. Like I was mid-lecture half the time, and I would have my laptop out, and I would be able to actually answer some clients while I'm taking notes in my lecture, right? So it's, it's really just about understanding that being a guru takes time, but it's not done by being less risky. It's actually done by being more risky. The more riskier you are, the more involved you are in something the more heart you have towards something, and the more you're gonna learn from the, be, making mistakes around that thing, okay? Another extremely important thing, guys, if you're gonna be in school and you're gonna be running a business, you're gonna have some long nights. You're gonna have a lot of stress, you're gonna be pulling out your hair, life's gonna suck for a period of time, but it's all gonna be worth it, I promise. So what's important is that you understand why are you doing this? Because when the times get tough, if you're just doing this for models and bottles, or if you're just doing this for Lamborghinis, right? Trust me, when the going gets tough, you guys are gonna not do what's required to push past um, that uh, level of friction. You're gonna need something super close to your heart, something that's embedded in you almost, that you can never forget, that you almost owe it to someone else to actually do, be successful. For me, my why is my mother. She, you know, my dad passed away when I was two years old. My mother was a single mother. She, she worked three jobs to put me and my brother through private school, gave her last dollar. And what's, what's amazing is that you know now, even in those 1 a.m. nights when I'm at the library and I have an assignment due the next day, I was still working on client work and completing those assignments and working really hard because I had it close to my heart. That it's not just for the luxury. It's not just for the fruits of the tree. It's, for, it's because I owe it to someone. I owe this to my mother, you understand? So with that being said, in order to propel yourself beyond a point where I think when things are tough, you're gonna quit, you must have a why that is so strong. If you have a why that is strong, I swear to God, you're gonna be bulletproof, I promise, okay? So I want you guys to understand something. You gotta pick something that's really low cost. My first company was a valet parking business. In order to start that company, all I needed was $200 to incorporate online, corporationscanada.com, and then I needed another $150 to go ahead and get a sign done for me that says valet with an arrow, so that the cars that come in, they know where to actually do the valet pickup. They know where to you know, drop off their car, okay? That's all I needed, and then I just started calling. I started doing the outflows required to get the inflows, okay? And then that sales revenue that we drove, that's what allowed us to cover our costs, okay? So this is how you commence a business. You don't take something that's crazy, because I didn't even run that business anymore. We dissolved that business, right? So if I was uh, you know, trying to spend dollars a month to build an app and then try to market it for another $30,000. It's like, I'm already $80,000 in the hole and I haven't even found product market fit yet, right? So what's important is that you start something that's extremely low cost, something that you know 110% that you can execute on it. It's very important. Don't start something that's out of your wheelhouse. Start something that's right now within your wheelhouse. There's tons of businesses you guys can choose, okay? The next tip I want you guys to understand is that access to information is at an all-time high. Okay? It used to be that you had to go to the library, you had to sit through some newspapers, and then you might be able to get the information you need in order to solve your issue. Nowadays, we have YouTube, we have Google. Okay, There's a lot of information just on those two platforms alone. And you know what? If you can't find the information on those two platforms, guess what? We have LinkedIn. LinkedIn, you 
can now find the person that works in that particular field that you couldn't find the information for, and you can ask them to go for the coffee and say, hey, I just have a question. I want to sit down with you. I want to get the answer to this. And this is something that you're struggling with in your business. Okay, so make sure this I'm gearing this all to, I'm not gearing this towards employment. I'm gearing this towards you guys starting a business and not feeling lost. Because it may, sometimes you might feel lost, but just know that your information you're seeking on how to solve your problem, it exists online, I promise you. And if it's not online, then someone online that you can access will give you this information. Okay? Now, when you're an employee, your manager helps sculpt your brain, helps give you assignments, you know, tells you what to learn, gives you some training material. You know the field you're in, so you also know what path you're on, so you, know, you kind of know what to learn up on. As an entrepreneur, there's no one breathing down your neck, there's no one telling you what to do, there's no one asking you to do anything for you, uh, for them, and there's no one telling you what to learn, particularly. So if you're in a specific business, you must, must, must set aside an hour or two per day Okay, to learn new information because we are not pros. We are all young. Okay, we're not 55, 65, 8. Like, you know, we haven't been on this earth for too long to have all that experience to know what's up. So, you have to learn every day, especially because there's no one barking down your neck. You're the only one in control of your intelligence. And being an entrepreneur that's intelligent is very key. Very key. So, make sure that you guys understand that, you know, the traditional route of graduating consists of you guys getting good grades in school, then you go ahead and once you graduate, you have your ceremony, then you go ahead and you uh, and you apply to jobs. You submit as many, you optimize your resume, you submit your resume as many times as possible to all these different employers, and you hope that there's a fish that's gonna bite, right? Right? Okay, that is the normal way. What I'm gonna implore you guys to do is not take that direction. Take the direction that I did, it's gonna be scary, it's gonna hurt a little bit, it's gonna feel great at times, but you must you must try this out. I implore you guys all to try something entrepreneurial, even if it's in the smallest capacity. If it's around your passion or not, I, I don't have a passion for valet parking, right? I just wanted to start something, gain some experience, and I knew it was a means to an end. And just remember that there's no such thing as an employee that is a billionaire. There's no such thing. The only billionaires in this world are people that have started businesses in the past. So what's awesome about this is when I graduated, I didn't submit a single resume. All I did was because I had the two-year traction from running my business part-time while in school, I was able to open an office. So right after graduation, right after my ceremony, boom, we just signed a lease, opened an office, uh, and loaded in about eight, nine people into the room. And that was all, I was only able to do that because we, I had that previous buffer period of being able to start this business while in school. We we're looking for the perfect transition. We're not looking for, hey, I go to school, and then I go apply to jobs, work at a job for a year or two, and then go we'll start a business. No, that's not the perfect transition. The perfect transition is you guys starting the business while in school. It's going to be difficult, but I promise you'll be worth it. And then what happens is, is right when you graduate, you go full time on that business because you built that infrastructure, you built that foundation, you have the foundation to now go full time on this business. 